Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, which is on demystifying industrial IoT connectivity. Great to have you here. My name is Jeremy Cowan. I'm Editorial Director and Co-Founder of IoT Now, and it's my pleasure to be your moderator today. Um, thank you all for joining us, wherever you are around the world. Uh, and this is going to be a webinar brought to you with Sierra Wireless, plus an industrial IoT overview from Beecham Research. So the first thing I'd like to do is obviously welcome our three speakers. And in order of appearance, they are Robin Duke Woolley, who is founder and CEO at Beecham Research. A warm welcome to you, Robin. Thanks very much, Jeremy. Great to be here. And I'd then like to introduce Benoit Tournier, Director of Marketing for the Industrial Business Line at Sierra Wireless. It's good to have you here too, Benoit. I'm glad to be on the panel as well. Thank you. And finally, our third speaker will also be familiar to many of you. He is Cyril Houlin, who is Vice President of Product Strategy for IoT Services, also at Sierra Wireless. Hello, Cyril. We don't hear your audio. Right. Thanks, Jeremy. Great to be with you, with you all. Um, so please don't forget, everyone, this webinar is being recorded. And from tomorrow, you can access the audio and the slides through our website at iot-now.com. And of course, at the end of the discussion, um, speakers, will be uh, answering questions that you put to them. So you can start sending me your questions right now. I'll put them to our panel at the end. All you have to do is just click on the questions button and type your question into the window. Any that we don't get to, we will pass to the speakers so that they can answer them later. Uh, they can do that offline. Finally, if you're having any technical issues whatsoever, with audio or slides, you can also use the question window to get advice from our tech support team. Now, today's webinar is for anyone who is puzzling over the connectivity choices facing them in industrial IoT. But before we get to that, we really, as always, we want to know what you think. So we have one quick poll. And remember, these individual replies are completely confidential we only get to see the overall picture. So um, I would like your thoughts, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, the poll question is as follows. At what stage is your industrial IoT deployment? Is it you're already using connected devices? Do you already have an IoT project underway? Do you plan to start an IoT project in the next 12 months? Or finally, are you doing research to stay up to date on the latest trends? So uh, are you using connected devices? Do you have an IoT project underway? Do you plan to start an IoT project in the next 12 months? Or are you doing research to keep up to date? Well, we have a um, pretty clear lead there at the moment, Robin. For the last category, 38% are indicating that they're doing research to stay up to date on the latest trends. And heaven knows, research in this market is always a good thing because it's changing so fast. Um, Indeed. Is that what you expected? Uh, yes, it's great, actually. It means that there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, interest in, uh, in the area. Of course, it doesn't actually say that they, they might be uh, doing research. They might already have uh, stuff uh, in their companies. Um, I'm assuming that, that that this is like at the beginning of the uh, uh, the uh, sort of interest, the research before they actually start doing things. So, I think that that's uh, that's that's terrific, and uh, it's uh, slightly more than uh, those already uh, using connected devices. So, uh, if you like, there are, there are more people coming into the uh, to the market. Very Which good. is very encouraging. Cyril, yeah. um, I, I see that we have 32, 33% uh, already using connected devices. And when you add in those who have an IoT project underway, I mean, we're getting close to half. Um, is, is that what you were expecting? 
Uh, yes, um, uh, well, I, I think I think that's sorry, great. Uh, Cyril, were you asking me or were you asking Cyril? Sorry, uh, as I say, for Cyril, please. Right. Okay. So yeah, yes and no. I think it's it's uh, it's interesting because it shows that uh, we're already uh, a, a good way down the road to the on the learning curve. Uh, there has been a, a certain number of projects launched, so many lessons learned. But still, we are probably still in. in uh, uh, there's still a lot to be learned, and, and the, the maturity of the of the ecosystem of the, of the industry is still uh, is still uh, nascent. So uh, uh, many industrial players, many uh, uh, stakeholders are asking questions, are are, uh, are trying to understand the complexity of the whole ecosystem. Ah, okay. you're up, okay. I think. Uh, Benoit doesn't seem to be able to hear us at the moment, um, but okay. I hear you, but we'll, uh, we'll I, didn't, I hear you, but uh, you were on mute, I think. No, no, I was not on mute, but no, no matter. Um, I was just wondering if there was anything that you wanted to to add. Yeah, yeah, maybe just to add uh, to Cyril's point. Uh, I think we have a kind of uh, a learning curve for sure, but uh, nowadays uh, the network has ch are changing. With LPWA coming, uh, there is a new generation of network which provide additional benefit and with low power and extended coverage. And maybe some of the uh, attendees uh, may want to, to hear uh, uh, some news about that as well today. So that's uh, uh, maybe uh, the part of the attendees uh, having already connected device, maybe that on not using LPWA network. Yeah. Well, look, without further ado, thank you for your comments, gentlemen. Um, let's get going with Beecham's uh, big picture of uh, the market we're looking at. Robin, over to you. Great. Thanks very much, Jeremy. Um, I'm going to go show uh, just a few slides. Uh, my first one is uh, moving straight to uh, why connect. And um, uh, over the years, uh, this has changed. Of course, in the very early days of M2M uh, and IoT, it was all about reducing operating costs. Uh, but more recently, uh, there's been much more interest in uh, generating uh, new service revenue, uh, as shown in the in the chart there, but also an increase in um, customer requirements, uh, meeting customer requirements. Uh, that might sound a, a little bit strange, but but actually it's meeting specific customer requirements as opposed to, if you like, general customer requirements. So understanding how people compete in the marketplace and uh, and responding to that. And then also complying with uh, new or existing uh, regulations. So there's more regulations out there now than has been the case before. Uh, smart metering and, and others, uh, smart city type uh, uh, regulations as well. So there's, there's, there's more to go for now than there has been in the past. But the key point that uh, I want to make here really is uh, reducing uh, operating costs um, is uh, has been the, the, the main driver uh, up to now, but now um, generating uh, new service revenue is, is beginning to take over from that. And uh, to, to complement that, uh, this is a, a slide that I've um, often used, which uh, shows um, if you connect stuff, if you connect uh, devices, uh, then uh, there's much more profit potential uh, uh, from the overall package. You're moving from a a product-only type uh, situation where the, the profits come only from uh, selling the product itself to a, um, a, a product plus service uh, opportunity where the profits come from uh, you know, consumables, services, uh, uh, and content, as well as the product itself. Um, and that means you can move more towards uh, the device becoming a way to deliver a, a service uh, and the service then becomes uh, a means to cultivate a, an ongoing customer relationship. And, of course, the service itself might be a multiple layers. There might be uh, a simple service and then building up to more complex services. And I think that uh, we're going to be hearing a bit more about that uh, in, in the next presentation. So, uh, but, but, but it's really just a general point that uh, uh, something is, that is competing in the marketplace with a product plus service is in a stronger position than uh, competing with just a product. So if we then move on to um, the dynamics uh, in the marketplace, um, uh, there, are, there are three, if you like, uh, overall use cases um, uh, for uh, connected uh, devices, aftermarket applications, which are 
out there in the marketplace and you add a box to it and then you can uh, uh, add connectivity and then you can get the um, uh, data back. That tends to be uh, more synonymous with uh, um, reducing costs. Um, uh, and then uh, regulatory, uh, not, 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 not specifically, but, but generally it tends to be more to do with uh, uh, saving costs after market applications. And then regulatory um, is um, all about uh, meeting uh, regulations. So uh, as I mentioned before, smart metering, uh, road tolls, uh, things like that. Um, and then the, uh, the final one is uh, OEM-based, where the uh, connectivity is uh, embedded uh, in the product uh, and goes out through, uh, through the um, uh, distribution channels and, and, and so forth. And we see uh, the real opportunity uh, in the future of uh, the, uh, the market really swinging behind OEM-based as being the real growth uh, opportunity. So um, we're moving from, uh, if you like, aftermarket as being the, uh, the uh, part of the market that uh, started the, the whole thing off uh, through regulatory and then on to uh, OEM-based. And at the same time, um, we're seeing um, a, a significant change in uh, connectivity that's, that's offered for IoT. Uh, now, we're, we're considering just the wide area here, uh, wide area connectivity types. And um, uh, in, traditionally, uh, in cellular, uh, we've had uh, 2G and the uh, precursors of 2G, and then moving to 3G. Um, and now that's moving towards uh, LTEM uh, as part of the, uh, the 4G uh, rollout. But then uh, now we have, uh, that, that's the current market, but then we have uh, opportunities both above that and below uh, coming uh, into the marketplace. First of all, at the high end, we've got uh, high data rate uh, opportunities with uh, 4G plus uh, moving towards uh, 5G. So there is uh, an opportunity for uh, dealing with applications that have high data rates, and, 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 and that's going up the scale. So... Uh, there, are, there are real opportunities uh, developing there. And at the same time, uh, with uh, the introduction of uh, new technologies at the, uh, at the narrow band or low data rate area, uh, both uh, non-cellular, such as uh, LoRa and, uh, and Sigfox, and, uh, and cellular, such as uh, MBIoT, we're seeing uh, a real opportunity now to connect uh, many more uh, low data rate devices at low cost, uh, and therefore that part of the market can take off as well. So you couple um, uh, these new connectivity types with uh, uh, the uh, move towards embedded, uh, and one can see that uh, uh, we're moving uh, much more towards um, very large numbers of connected devices uh, with uh, relatively low installation costs uh, and um, high um, availability in the marketplace. So. Um, we think that uh, the next few years are going to be very interesting. They're going to be particularly interesting for um, OEM-based um, uh, manufacturers and what they want to do with their products uh, and whether they want to uh, embed connectivity into them uh, or not. Uh, so some key market trends, uh, really to summarize that, um, we see the, the reason for connecting is moving from uh, saving money to making money. Uh, from cost optimization to uh, new revenue enhancement with new services and so forth. OEMs are moving from a product to a product plus service basis. Um, and we think that uh, those that uh, do not uh, move from a product to product plus service uh, are likely to put themselves at a competitive disadvantage compared with uh, others in their segment of the market that do do that. Um, obviously, if you have a, a product plus service, you have more variations of the offer uh, available to, to compete. Uh, and that, we think, is an increasingly strong um, differentiator uh, in the marketplace. So um, we think that uh, innovative thinking uh, leads to service evolution and competitive advantage. So once there is a connection there for a, for a product, there's all sorts of opportunities to add new levels of service and to uh, deepen that service. So it's not like you have a connection, you have a service, and then that's it. Uh, that's just the start of a, of a service evolution that can go on for many years. Um, and uh, that's really how um, new differentiation will, will be in, in the marketplace, we think. 
So IoT market growth, we think, will be dominated by OEMs building connectivity uh, into their products. We think uh, a lot of the new connections will come from uh, that side of the marketplace. Um, we see cellular connectivity breaking out both high and low data rate uh, devices. Uh, so much more opportunity for high data rate as well as low data rate um, connectivity. So many more applications can be served uh, in the marketplace than was the case before. Um, we see a huge growth in narrowband connections over the next five years, uh, enabling uh, new applications that simply weren't viable before to connect um, and extending data sources of others. Uh, so having clusters of sensors, for example, whereas before you might only have been able to afford one or two sensors. And then also significant growth of high uh, medium band um, as existing applications are driven by the need for more richer data to, um, uh, to provide a process optimization and new services. So uh, much more growth uh, across uh, all spheres uh, of the market in the future. So after that short introduction, I'm now going to hand over to Benoit, who's going to go into, uh, into this in, in some more depth. Over to you, Benoit. You're on mute. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so you spoke about the different layers of services and uh, starting with uh, saving money uh, before moving to uh, making money. Uh, let me start with uh, the maintenance topic, okay, the, uh, with maintenance um, uh, services. Uh, so you have a, a wide range of IoT solutions to uh, save some cost uh, operating assets in industries. Uh, and so in many industries, as a matter of fact, maintenance is becoming critical. Uh, uh, for uh, cost, but as well for availability reason. Uh, thus, uh, there is a lot of uh, focus on, on solution to optimize maintenance. Uh, as an example, in the US industry, uh, uh, there is more than uh, $200 billion which is spent each year on maintenance of uh, plants, equipment, and facilities. So there are several uh, ways uh, to implement maintenance plans. Uh, let's look at uh, what separates, for example, predictive to preventive maintenance which are the most uh, popular uh, maintenance program nowadays. Uh, so starting with, uh, with preventive maintenance, uh, most of preventive maintenance plans are usually time-driven. Uh, so uh, for example, uh, maintenance tasks are planned every 80 hours uh, of operation for a specific asset. Uh, the mean time between failure, the so-called MTBF, uh, or a bath curb on the right indicates that a new machine has a high probability uh, of failure because of installation problems during the first week, a few weeks of operation. And after this inter initial uh, period, so the probability of failure is relatively low for an extended period. And after this normal machine life period, the probability of failure increase again sharply with elapsed time. Uh, and so in preventive maintenance management, the machine repairs uh, are scheduled based on, uh, on this MTBF uh, data, uh, MTBF statistics, uh, which are uh, very well known by, uh, by OEMs. But this has uh, shortcoming due to the fact that some plants uh, have specific uh, operations uh, modes, uh, so specific variables uh, which affect the normal operating life of the machinery. So it's useful to add some kind of uh, machine learning and a predictive model to that. And so that's the scope of the uh, predictive uh, maintenance plans, which are, can be considered are, as a, a little bit more uh, appropriate for, uh, for several industries. Uh, so in this predictive maintenance, huh, the, the program is uh, based on the monitoring of an asset's health in order to anticipate the opportunities and to proactively perform maintenance to preserve an asset from failure or to protect it in some way. So basically, predictive maintenance is a condition-driven program, okay? So instead of relying on industrial uh, or implant average life statistics uh, to schedule these uh, maintenance activities, predictive maintenance uses direct monitoring of the mechanical conditions, system efficiency, and uh, other indicators to determine the actual uh, MTBF or uh, loss of efficiency for each machine train and system in the plant. So predictive maintenance can use data analytics, huh, machine learning models, and so on, to quickly predict the onset of equipment failure. So the IoT is making it easier for equipment users to send operational data to the cloud, where it can be through analyzed to better understand how the equipment is uh, uh, operated, how it is uh, behaving, and uh, when it 
could uh, require uh, maintenance and to replace uh, this part or optimize uh, this, uh, this part. And so what you see at the bottom of the slide is uh, the result of a, a, survey, a survey from the Aberdeen Group, uh, which uh, ranks some, uh, some predictive models. And so uh, to, uh, to, to improve uh, their uh, operational challenge, uh, this industry uh, put in place some IoT program to reduce uh, unplanned downtime, so uh, such as 3.5% uh, in, uh, in this industry, uh, according to this study improve overall equipment effectiveness and reduce uh, maintenance cost uh, and finally increase uh, the return on asset so these are uh, a few um, a few uh, benefits from uh, predictive maintenance plans now if we go to to uh, to more uh, detail uh, depending on the industry uh, which uh, put in place this uh, maintenance uh, program uh, we can see as a common scheme that uh, repair and maintenance uh, across all these industries which are listed on the right is a big expense, up to 16% in private sector, in the private industry sector. And so predictive maintenance uh, has shown strong uh, return on uh, uh, investment in various markets, for example in the HVAC system, so the heating, ventilation and air conditioning market. Replacing an industrial chiller is very expensive. Uh, it's, uh, the study has shown more than 1,000% uh, ROI, for example, assuming uh, uh, $5,000 yearly maintenance cost for uh, a typical program, leveraging predictive maintenance uh, model, uh, versus uh, $350,000 uh, cost for 1,000-ton uh, 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 chiller, typically. And so obviously, the longer the capital expense can be delayed, the higher the ROI, uh, the ROI can be. Uh. So that's uh, a typical example for, uh, for this uh, private, uh, private sector. If we go to customer example in, in this uh, typical industry, so let's start with the uh, water purification system. Uh, so Veolia, for example, uh, has decided to offer uh, an end uh, uh, services and called uh, uh, the the vision uh, the vision uh, system. Uh, so this is a service contract to keep their water purification system running 24/7. And they are mission critical to the medical operations for specific uh, uh, enterprises uh, such as uh, hospital, medical labs, pharmaceutical ph manufacturers, and other uh, healthcare facilities. Veolia Water wanted to use uh, the IoT to optimize the cost of maintenance, create service revenues with premium SLA, and improve customer experience. So the solution developed with CROLS is a 24-7 connected water treatment system. It generates alerts on mission-critical events to the service teams and customers. Leveraging cellular networks infrastructure, Veolia doesn't depend on customers' internet access, and thus can get access to machines data at all time from anywhere whatever the industry is, hospital, pharmaceutical manufacturer, or whatever, which are not keen uh, to accept uh, some kind of intrusion in their IT system. So Veolia Vision and Vision Air Web portals allow customers to review and manage contracts, download useful manuals, and performance data trends. So this is a, a, key, a key benefit for, uh, for Veolia customers. Another customer example, uh, so in the air compressor, uh, air compressor industry, uh, so this is uh, Atlas Copco. Uh, typically, Atlas Copco is a, is a, is a leading, uh, leading um, enterprise providing uh, uh, air, compression, uh, air compression solution. And so Atlas Copco wanted a built-in solution for always-on connectivity, easy to install, and a web-based tool to get proactive alert and energy savings information. As a matter of fact, air compressors are consuming a lot of energy, and it was uh, uh, very well appreciated by the customer if they could uh, uh, bring, if Atlas Copco could bring some solution to save this energy. So they put together a cellular solution that was easy to install, plug into the compressor controller, and allow to detect malfunction, energy consumption, and component deterioration, and report anytime, anywhere. If any operating parameter indicates abnormal behavior, maintenance personnel can be alerted via SMS or email and plan the air compressor maintenance operation effectively, being aware of the part to replace before arriving on site. As a result, uh, technicians 
uh, is sure to come with the necessary components, uh, necessary spare parts, uh, thereby minimizing intervention costs. And other use cases of IoT beyond predictive maintenance to prevent downtime uh, is data analysis for internal purpose so that engineers can improve the next generation of compressor, diagnose customers' energy consumption profiles in order to adapt the targeting, targeted mission profile of this um, air compressor. Another benefit as well is the ability to provide different uh, service level agreement for customers depending on the amount of data they want to collect and also the type of services they want to perform. So the next slide shows uh, the actual implementation for this, uh, for this case. So here you can see on the, on the, on the bottom uh, left, uh, the, uh, the typical of the shared gateway. Uh, so currently it's, uh, it has been updated to the FX30 gateway uh, from CRLS. Uh, this, this gateway is plugged into the compressor controller via the Ethernet port and collects uh, key asset data, key compressor data. Uh, so from the compressor, such as a report on operating status, uh, motor uh, data, barrel data, all barrel data, and there's all these data on a regular basis with standard IoT data protocol that is very lightweight uh, to CRLS gateway. Moving forward, uh, instead of using an external of the shell gateway, there is an opportunity as well to uh, replace this gateway by an embedded module. This is the Air Prime component that you can see as well on the slide. Uh, Air Prime component, Air Prime module, uh, which is uh, the heart of the gateway, by the way. And uh, so uh, moving to this uh, module level, it's an opportunity to, to, uh, to make the solution smaller and leverage the embedded modem in inside the gateway to integrate directly the module onto the controller of the compressor. Uh, to save BOM, uh, decrease uh, so cost, and uh, better integrate uh, it in a smaller uh, form factor without any impact on the business application, since the business application is running at the edge on the module. Uh, and no impact as well on the global system from the machine to the cloud. Huh? So the customer is also leveraging this uh, uh, CRWS IoT platform uh, that you can see on the bottom right. And uh, so this uh, global system uh, enables this data collection, store time series, and push uh, all these data through uh, cloud connectors to uh, uh, Atlas Copco uh, uh, cloud instance. So Sierra Cloud Platform is also used to push firmware upgrade over the air, manage the devices, and uh, activate uh, any new device from the fleet through the web UI uh, console that you can see on the top right. All these data, for sure, are encrypted from the device to the cloud uh, with a two-factor authentication for enhanced security. So as a next, um, next layer, uh, beyond uh, saving money, so uh, there, is a, uh, there is a key target, which is uh, as well uh, making money. So predictive maintenance, value add services um, uh, is now the... the the, the way uh, to, uh, to, to, to make money on that. So with IoT, industrial OEM can transform their business model from selling equipment based on one-time fee to equipment sold as a service. So for example, on this slide, you have a few industries which uh, already uh, like to sell and transform their, their business and like to sell their, uh, their asset as a service. Uh, for example, uh, selling uh, compressed air instead of uh, selling air compressor selling calories instead of uh, selling air conditioning chillers, and selling, selling uh, light instead of uh, light bulb. So for example, in this, uh, in this light market in the USA, Philips signed a 10 years performance contract with the uh, Washington uh, Metropolitan Area Transit Authority to upgrade the lighting in a 25 parking garage using energy efficient LED. And so what is interesting is that this new digital lighting system was installed at zero cost find services payment only if Philips can produce the energy savings they have guaranteed. Washington Mata will continue to pay the energy bills for lighting in the garage, but because the garage costs less to light, Philips can get paid out of the cost savings over the 10 years contract cycle. So this is another way to, to save money, to make money. Uh, how to make this transformation a reality? Huh? So this is a, a key, uh, key question for uh, companies uh, uh, transforming uh, their uh, business model and uh, digitali digitali 
digitalizing uh, the, their, uh, their revenues. <laughs> so how to make this transformation a reality? It has be, been done uh, uh, before in other verticals, uh, and uh, no need to reinvent the wheel. The key is to leverage the industry expertise and partner along the IoT value stack while minimizing the actors involved. Create pilot projects, meaning start small before going larger, and assess the benefit and ROI at smaller scale and scale fast, finally. But before scaling, you need as well to ensure that the IoT solution is also integrated into uh, the, uh, the, the business apps, uh, into the business system, so that the operations are further automated from provisioning of devices to data collection. So standard technology should be preferred. Huh? Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the first uh, recommendation I would, uh, I would uh, say. Uh, prefer standard technology to avoid vendor lock-in with proprietary solution. The cellular standard, for example, is coming up with uh, enhanced coverage in the world uh, without any capex in network infrastructure. So therefore, uh, allowing many IoT use cases uh, we mentioned above. Uh, uh, it's often the case that a company starts betting on a proprietary communication protocol or dedicated infrastructure uh, and then have to invest millions to become expert in network maintenance in case uh, they have to, to maintain this private network, uh, which is not part of their core competence or even strategic positioning. So basing your IoT solution on standards such as cellular will truly allow future proofing of the IoT solution. Finally, uh, open source software or hardware are also a way to avoid being tied to a single vendor. So you can uh, get, uh, port your application more easily from one vendor to another. So this is another recommendation. But with that, uh, let me give the speech to Cyril, uh, who will guide you through uh, Sierra Wireless Cellular Connectivity Services. Thank you, Benoit. I'm not on mute. No, I'm not. All right. So to start with, let me go through a few words on, on Sierra Wireless. Uh, we have shipped more than 130 million cellular devices since 90, 1997, uh, and we expect expect to ship more than 150 million over the coming four years. So this is this shows the, the scale of that business. Uh, so Sierra is also a very strong innovation powerhouse. For example, we we own numerous foundational patents in the domains of uh, low power wide area and especially LTE Cat M1. We have customers in uh, more than 130 countries. And for what concerns connectivity, our global MBNO connectivity offering, we have deployed and operate SIMs for our customers in more than 140 countries. Sierra is number one IoT cellular module player, and we've turned over uh, 672 million USDs over the last 12 months. Uh, one of Sierra's key strengths and at the core of our strategy is to be able to address uh, our customers' needs from the device to the cloud application uh, with, an, with a kind of offering continuum. So uh, our portfolio is composed of cellular modules, which will be embedded into finished IoT devices, uh, but also cellular gate gateways and routers. It's also composed of our global uh, MVNO, uh, global smart SIM solution, for best-in-class connectivity with truly global coverage and resilience mechanisms, and I will talk a little bit more about that uh, later on, as well as our, uh, our connectivity offering, as well as uh, SIMs from different US MNOs. Uh, it's also composed of what we call our ready-to-connect solution. The philosophy of that solution is to embed intimately into our modules natively a subscription with a smart SIM and UICC capabilities to shorten and de-risk the IoT journey from the concept, the ideation phase uh, of a connected device to the day it hits the field to serve its application. We also provide a select number of verticalized applications in the fields of security and asset tracking. And across all of those solutions, our, our AirVantage platform will enable the end-to-end -end management of our SIMs, of our connectivity devices, and the data flow. So it's a, a bit of the wrap um, across all of those, of, all of those solutions. Um, industry analysts, so, so, and I, I, this, this is something, something we, we read uh, for, from different analysts and we observe uh, across the market, say that more than 50% of IoT deployments are failures. Uh, failures 
in the sense of uh, if we compare the, the results of the initiative compared to the, uh, the initial expected output. And we see four main reasons why they typically fail or at least uh, miss their initial, uh, their initial goal. Uh, and these are big challenges for our industry. First, um, the first challenge is, is very much about the core and culture of the company. Are we willing and able to transform into a services-driven business? So it transforms for sell, from selling products uh, to solutions and ev eventually products as a solution. Can we sell and deliver services instead of products? Do we understand what it will take to change all uh, the concerned parts of the company? Secondly, why do we want to change? What new values are we creating for our customers? What type of stickiness? Uh, what value can be created from the new data that is, that is made available for us or for, uh, for our customers or for the customers' customers? This must be, the, in a way, the driving force behind the, the transformation, behind that change. Thirdly, uh, we need to understand the technical, the, deeply the technical complexities uh, in developing, testing, and deploying an IoT solution. Many projects are seriously underfinanced from a financial and, and, and timing perspective. And finally, what is the expected ROI? Uh, qualitative and quantitative ROI, the complete TCO of an IoT solution is very often underestimated, and, and that ob obviously uh, leads easily leads to um, to disappointments. What about connectivity? The, the IoT connectivity link is key, as it is the, the bridge between the, the physical object and the application uh, in the cloud. It's the bridge between the, the, the machine in the physical world and the application and services on the cloud. The quality of this uh, of this IoT uh, of any IoT service is obviously highly dependent on the uh, on the service availability and therefore the quality of that connectivity because that is critical uh, for because of the criticality of the iot uh, connection we expect um, a connectivity solution to enable to monitor to control and to manage the remotely connected products with the right end-to-end -end level of security uh, also the right level of, of quality the right level of uptime rate and to be able to accompany my needs my deployments across the globe eventually or in, in one country regionally or or more and more uh, on a global basis now um, looking at the total cost of ownership of a of an iot solution we we see that uh, connectivity the connectivity cost is often one of the largest chunk yet it's often also underestimated uh, especially for solutions that would be operational and live on the field over a long time and over may, across many different different geographies this is um, this is often neglected and we uh, as that chart from analysis mason shows uh, it, it can easily account for 30 percent of the overall tco of a, of a project now, um, discussing with, with our customers, we've identified four types of challenges uh, that an, an IoT deployment will face. The first one is, what is my coverage need? Will I deploy in one country, in multiple countries, truly globally? It will, will my device be indoors, uh, outdoors, in rural areas, urban areas? So the, the typology of the, uh, the physical deployment. Then what level of service availability do I need uh, to produce across my deployments in terms of uptime rate? What type of resilience do I need to count on? What services bearers are uh, best suited for my needs? Data, SMS, voice, uh, USSD, eventually. What, what uh, technology layers uh, are best suited for my needs? 4G and or older technologies for, for, for failover. What level of management and solution flexibility would I need, depending on the lifespan of my devices on the field? Uh, on the variety of countries I will deploy in, uh, and what is the value of a strong and flexible management platform? So to, to what extent does the management layer uh, um, enable me to, to have the right level of flexibility and to have the right level of control of my uh, device's estate? Do I need EYCT, for example, for uh, remote subscription management? Does that bring, bring me uh, TCO leverage and flexibility over the, the, the lifespan of my deployment? 
And lastly, how can I simplify my connected devices operations, de-risk it, control properly my TCO, and that goes through the, the platform, the end-to-end -end security, and the end-to-end -end experience of my uh, operations people, and, uh, and eventually uh, ha having a, a homogeneous management um, set of tools and APIs to plug to my own systems. Uh, so that, that said, uh, we can summarize the, uh, those ch challenges into three uh, considerations for a, for a successful IoT de deployment. One, where will I deploy my assets? Which, which types of geographies? How will I manage my fleet, well, my fleet of devices? And uh, how will I plan for the long run to control my costs and, in a way, the future-proofness of my, of my solution, of my deployment? Uh, so the geographical scope of deployment is key. Will I deploy in Europe, in the U.S., in other regions, or will I need, uh, will my need be uh, to 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 cover the globe and uh, and therefore be able to address truly global global coverage? Uh, our smart sim, global MVNO smart sim proposition, uh, is 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 a solution which which fits each each of those needs, whether it be local, regional, or truly global. It can be the it, it, it fits right and uh, any type uh, any of those types of deployments. In terms of uh, of QoS, our smart team is a very very innovative solution uh, with patented resilience mechanisms. It enables uh, in a way best coverage uh, with network access, which is not limited to one single roaming alliance, but uh, covers. Uh, a, Virtually every single operator across the globe. We have more than 100 uh, roaming agreements across the globe. In terms of quality of service, uh, it's uh, the, um, the the mode of operation of the SIM is based on a um, on a QS. Uh, the, the network selection is based on a QS criteria, which is dynamic, dynamically monitored by a, an on-SIM decision engine. So the the SIM acts as a um, monitors and, and acts uh, on the, uh, the, the, the device's attachment to the network and will dynamically react to network events and network failures to detach, reattach to the best giving network uh, according to a uh, live QS criteria. And lastly, flexibility. Uh, it, it centralizes the management of all, uh, the Advantage platform centralizes the management of all your Sierra wireless smart SIMs, it, their, uh, their life cycle but also uh, the management of legacy teams for, from other operators into that single, single platform. Um, so smart team is, the, uh, is, is a perfect fit solution for those, for those, global, uh, for those, those global deployments. Now we have a, 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 an even more, uh, a more um, elaborate uh, and rich solution to simplify the lives of uh, of, of global deployments, that's what we call ready to connect. As I've said, the philosophy is to embed uh, intimately into a, a device, whether it be a module or a or a, um, a gateway and router, a, a, a um, smart SIM global subscription, uh, and 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 that that uh, that is that is very very innovative and and very uh, uh, instrumental to the simplification of the IoT journey. As we see on the, on this slide on the upper part. Uh, this is the, the 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 standard IoT journey from the the idea of a connected device, its prototype, and and all the the key milestones to to uh, to launch it on the field. Uh, we generally estimate that the time to um, for a, for a connected device between the idea and uh, and launching it on the field is uh, is roughly 24 months. And with ready to connect, we expect to have that uh, that time to market, that time to uh, and even time to revenue. So from the prototype uh, to the, uh, the the initial tests and deployment on the field, we we shrink and and condense all the uh, the key elements of the design uh, test and and um, end to end testing are shrunk into a, a pre tested pre integrated device. Uh, so that that limits the, uh, the the hassles and questions around how do, how do I communicate between my platform and the device? Which protocols do I use to exchange data? How do I diagnose field issues? Uh, how do I keep my connectivity costs under control for truly global uh, deployments? How do I secure? How do I design uh, an end-to-end -end security scheme? How do I make sure that my staff can access to the uh, to the solution and and manage everything under 
a, a kind of single pane of glass uh, and avoid the uh, the complexity and, and extra cost of uh, heterogeneous APIs and and um, and management applications. So that's really the philosophy of Ready to Connect. Now, Ready to Connect and and uh, any IoT device is uh, needs to be designed with the right level of security. Security is also very often underestimated. Uh, and, and security is a chain that's only as strong as its weakest link. This is what we, we often say. And this is why we take measures at multiple levels on the device side, on the network infrastructure. So we, Sierra, own and manage our own core network infrastructure with four redund complete redundant uh, infrastructure hubs across the globe. Our AirVantage platform um, has numerous features, numerous security schemes. Uh, to secure the communication with the devices, the fleet monitoring, access to the platform, et cetera, et cetera. So the security again is, is very key and, and it's very important to to, um, to anticipate those questions before the device is, is already designed and, and hitting the field. So ready to connect is one of the uh, the, 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 the simple and uh, and simple, easy, dearest manner to uh, to, um, to to hit the field. Uh, if we zoom in the U.S., in the U.S., we propose uh, different flavors of our solutions. The uh, uh, our smart SIM, uh, the capacity to bring your own SIM for for uh, for customers having a, a a kind of a life before Sierra. So you you will be able to manage under uh, Advantage your legacy AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, uh, Sprint SIMs, as well as your smart SIM under the the, the, the same. Um, user interface and the same set of APIs. And we also have a solution called Manage Connectivity. Manage Connectivity is, um, is composed of an enterprise gateway, which we rent and we rent and bundle with high-end airtime plans uh, in the US and, and soon Canada, as well as white glove installation and monitoring services. Uh, this, is, this is a very attractive solution for retailers uh, remote office premises and and also in some cases so for primary connectivity and also as in some cases as, as fade over solution for fiber and um, and cable connectivity um, a, a key cornerstone uh, to operationalize efficiency the efficiency of a, of a deployment is obviously the management platform to orchestrate and, and monitor that uh, your your estate of devices and teams so in order to manage your your SIM fleet, manage its, its life cycle, the, the devices, estate, monitor your supplier's solution situation, troubleshoot um, the, the situation on the field. Uh, uh, an end-to-end -end platform is very key, and that's really the mission, the purpose of uh, of AirVantage. Uh, it's an end-to-end -end IoT orchestration platform, um, and this is everything but a commodity. This is obviously very key to the uh, the efficiency of uh, of the operation of a of a fleet of connected device it's super key for the product productivity of a, of a solution and and on that topic uh airvantage does more than that uh, so a few few words on, on airvantage we've engineered it uh, as this end-to-end -end orchestration platform with a homogeneous user interface and with a very simple a very simple uh, API library for SIM connectivity and device management. On the SIM perspective, you can order SIM cards, obviously, manage their lifecycle, monitor and troubleshoot yeah. any connectivity uh, field issue on smart SIMs, but also third-party SIMs. With the same interface, uh, uh, and it's key for your operations team, it enables um, to manage the devices, monitor the devices, troubleshoot the behavior of the devices, and upgrade the uh, the devices firmware and software. Uh, as a data orchestration platform, all the data can also be, be, be sent to third-party applications so that the platform feeds uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, data and tool uh, through the uh, live data feeds to uh, dedicated applications, ERPs or, or public clouds uh, like AWS, Azure, uh, Bluemix, or, or, or SAP HANA, for example. And, and there are pre-configured um, cloud connectors with all of those uh, flagship uh, um, uh, cloud, uh, cloud public clouds. And, and by the way, uh, Sierra has been awarded by Frost and Sullivan uh, the uh, Global IT Solutions Customer Value Leadership Award 
last year for this uh, end-to-end management and orchestration platform. So, so this was a, a key recognition uh, uh, on our capabilities for connectivity and device management. Now, um, so um, the last milestone, the last uh, main concern of an IoT deployment is how can I future-proof my solution and design it from the from day one so that it, it really can face the the challenges, the the, the, the my, my day one challenges, but also uh, face my needs for the coming five, ten years, twenty years in in some in some cases for uh, smart metering, for example. So the story, the history of IoT connectivity has seen several important and notable milestones uh, with regards to connectivity. It's, it has started uh, many years ago with uh, domestic MNO SIMs. Uh, this is a bit the, the prehistory of, uh, of IoT and M2M. Then came um, standard roaming SIMs not so long ago. We've launched our smart SIM uh, a few years ago, uh, five, 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 six years ago. Uh, then more recently, uh, EUICC, and especially with the the 3.x version of EUICC, which is the, the mature version of, of uh, remote SIM provisioning, standardized remote SIM provisioning, is now also a key component to enable the right level of flexibility and future proofness of uh, of IoT deployments, without without having a uh, to, to anticipate any truck roll and to also leverage future uh, negotiations with the uh, uh, the connectivity providers. Um, and, and parallel to all that, also network evolutions with cellular low power wide area, LPWA, with two flavors, CAT M1 and CAT MB1. MB1 are bringing the right tools for the massification of IoT, the right tools because it uh, brings down the cost of uh, of, of the devices, the cost of the modules, it improves the uh, the, um, the penetration uh, of um, uh, of, um, of cellular signal, um, and uh, and it, it improves the uh, the power consumption of the devices, which is obviously very key for battery powered devices. So all smart uh, all, all all smart seem uh, uh, a good management platform. The insurance capability provided by the uh, latest flavor of UICC technology, the benefits of LPWA, and the uh, the benefits, the added value, uh, the, the simplification brought by Ready to Connect, are all uh, really powerful ingredients to maximize the success of IoT deployments. So, uh, as, as we said at the beginning of this uh, of this webinar, we're uh, probably at the inflection point of the uh, history of IoT with now some some uh, a, a good way uh, a good learning curve behind us but also a, a some some maturity uh, uh, still ahead of us uh, but the, the key ingredients technological ingredients are now with us lpwa eycc some some uh, nice uh, agglomeration of technologies like ready to connect make it uh, um, really the the nice set of, the nice sets of ingredients to uh, to enable the successful IoT deployments, and and Sierra's long-lasting experience in the M2M and IoT industry is also here to help you succeed. And by the way, uh, for any um, for any need, we have uh, uh, some some interesting and significant uh, uh, documentation online, which you can find uh, behind that this this URL on LPWA cellular technology connectivity. So please. Uh, Use and abuse these uh, of, of the, that, that documentation, and uh, and uh, don't hesitate to rely on us for any question uh, about technology and uh, uh, whether it be hardware, uh, cloud applications, and and uh, cellular connectivity questions. And that will be it for my uh, for my part. Jeremy, back to you. Jeremy, you're on mute. Or yes, I'm on mute. That's my mistake. Um, we need to go straight to questions. We've got time uh, to get to a few of those. So let's um, start uh, with a question that came in for Benoit. Um, Benoit, the question is, when implementing a predictive maintenance solution, what, in your view, is the best technology to use? 
So it, it depends uh, basically of the, the industry, but uh, the, the remark that we got from uh, Veolia and from Atlas Copco, from both of them basically is, uh, is still accurate. Huh? So leveraging a cellular network infrastructure, these customers do not need to depend on customers, on the final customer's uh, internet access. Uh, so they can get access to the machine's data at all time in any configuration. If you need to rely on the customer, on the final customer's IT, to uh, connect your machine and get access to the data coming from this machine, then it becomes to be a nightmare because you have to justify uh, everything which is related to uh, security and so on, uh, and uh, demonstrate that you will not uh, impact uh, the IT infrastructure of the targeted customers uh, that you want to, uh, to equip with IoT systems. So most of the time, IoT uh, based on cellular is gaining uh, momentum. And uh, so that we see uh, across this uh, capital asset industry. Thank you. Um, we don't have long, so uh, I'm going to ask you if you can, each of you, to give me your answers in about 30 seconds. And this one's going to be quite tough. This is for you, Cyril, I think. Can unified um, I IoT platforms support unified critical communications, such as LTE and NB uh, IoT, with support for provisioning mobile LTE quality of service, priority, and preemption? Um, a big question, not much time. What do you think, Cyril? Okay, so yes, an IoT platform can do that. The, uh, the, the, the main constraint uh, relies on the, the handover of the uh, instruction in a roaming context. So the platform can manage through the APN or through the provisioning of the right services, the right uh, uh, policy management, the um, or power saving features or priority levels blah 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 but the uh, uh, in some cases in a roaming context uh, some of those uh, instructions are are not can, uh, are not passed on between a a a host net, a home network and a host net and a visited network so it really depends we need to get into the details of which which of those uh, features and functions uh, are workable in in a um, inter in, in network so it's probably best to drill into that with the uh, person concerned. Um, I'm right. sure we can arrange that. Um, Robin, this question came in for you while you were speaking. Uh, sorry, I joined late, but what data are these trends based on? Was there a specific survey with these questions? Uh, the answer to that is yes. There was a specific uh, survey that we conducted in uh, 2015 uh, related to those, and it was looking at uh, uh, the situation now and the expected situation in three years' time. Okay, thank you. Um, Cyril, questioner Afandali uh, wants to know, cellular is not always the best connectivity method for IIoT and gives examples of offshore oil rigs. What connectivity method or methods do you recommend when cellular isn't available, uh, considering IIT use cases typically require big bandwidth for data? Okay, so first, uh, I, I, my, what pops to my mind is uh, low power wide area, CAT M1 and B1 are technologies which will greatly improve the, the coverage of existing net networks. The, uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the, yeah, the cell radius is, is massively improved, so that we will see that the very deep indoors coverage and uh, rural and, and uh, off some kind of offshore coverage through that kind of technology. Then when there's absolutely no cellular technology, uh, for the, the type of use case you're mentioning, there's nothing left apart from uh, satellites. Uh, satellite, in some cases, has become cheaper than it than it was even uh, just a few years ago. But it's clearly not as cheap. There's latency. It's not suit for super high bandwidth uh, requirements. It's not as flexible, far beat uh, um, uh, as cellular. But it's it's probably the best compromise for for areas which are not and will never be covered by, uh, by cellular. But again, think about the potential of, of LPWA uh, with the dramatic increase of, uh, of coverage for deep indoors again and, and the benefits of the increase of, uh, of the cell radiuses. Okay, um, I'd love to ask more questions. There, we're running out of time. I'm gonna put one more, and this one is, again, I think probably best to you, Cyril. Um, Martha Sonkodi has asked, what is the smart SIM to eSIM strategy? Strictly in 30 seconds, if you can. 
Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. The, our smart SIM uh, also features the UACC capability, so it's two different uh, dimensions. The smart SIM offers truly global coverage with resilience mechanisms, the capacity to switch over from one network to another according to QS events to, to network events. E, e, the eSIM or UACC uh, capability offers the insurance to, uh, to future-proof my deployment, to swap out uh, the, the profile on the SIM from smart SIM to MNO X or the philosophy of, uh, of the insurance on, on my uh, deployed estate and avoid truck roll if ever further down the road I want to swap out uh, a, a SIM from, from, uh, from one profile to another and also address um, questions around regulations. For example, today deploying in China or Brazil will require some specific uh, local context and, and UACC can, can be a bridge uh, to, uh, to overcome that, the, the, those, those challenges. Thank you. Uh, well, that was uh, an amazingly comprehensive reply given the time I gave you. Thank you all. Thank you uh, to all of our speakers today. Sadly, that is all that we have time for. Um, I would just ask you, please don't forget to book our, uh, bookmark our website. You'll find that at iot-now.com. And there you'll find all the latest news, videos, interviews, reviews, and so much more. But finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to each of our speakers. Um, Robin, Robin Duke Woolley from Beach and Research. Thanks, Robin. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Great to be here. And to Benoit Tournier from Sierra Wild. It's great to have you here, Benoit. Thank you to all of you for attending as well. Indeed. And also from Sierra Wireless, Cyril Hollin. Many thanks, Cyril. It's been great to have you here. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, everyone. Most of all, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining us from around the world, wherever you've been dialing in from. Keep safe. We really appreciate the time you've spent with us from everyone here at IOT Now. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.